Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson. We are now on chapter one, our inaugural chapter uh, for our BA 121 sales class. Chapter one is about the power to get what you want in life. It doesn't necessarily only have to be specified towards uh, if you have a sales position. It could also uh, be relative to uh, interview, relative to uh, relationships, all kinds of different things. Sales uh, is universal in many, many different aspects. Uh, what I like about the, the textbook and as well as the, the PowerPoint for this class is that they do have a lot of interactive videos. Typically in most classes that I, that I teach, uh, they don't have a lot of videos, so I have to go out and search for videos that are applicable to the topic. Uh, but the videos uh, here are embedded into uh, the course, and as you know, I've sent you out an electronic copy of, of the book. And you can click on that link and watch the video. Uh, you'll see them here on the PowerPoint, but don't necessarily stop the PowerPoint and uh, go look at the video. Um, I've also embedded them in the modules as well. Uh, so the first video is video ride along. Video Get What You Want in Life uh, features Lisa Peskin, sales trainer at uh, Business Development University. She shares her, her thoughts on uh, the power of selling in everyday life. Uh, and, and like I said, it's not just relative to, uh, to making a sale or closing a deal, but it's also relative to uh, uh, closing negotiations on a job that you, you're attempting to get or, uh, or negotiating with someone uh, or something uh, for your per in your personal life. Uh, so ride along discussions, uh, these are really good as well. Uh, they don't have them for every video, but they do have them for, for this one. Uh, so it says give three instances in daily life uh, where you have sold yourself. So you might have, just as I, I mentioned, you might have sold yourself uh, on an actual sale, you might have sold yourself uh, in an interview, and you might have sold yourself uh, to a person who you wanna be in a relationship with. Uh, and then also explain the role of selling skills uh, in helping you achieve what you want in life. So regardless of whether I assign these uh, for you to do as an assignment uh, or if I uh, just have them there, a good thing is to actually answer those questions because it will help you through the thought process uh, of the class and it will lead you through the path that I want you to go as well as the path that the author wants you to go uh, through this course. Chapter objectives are understand the role of selling in everyday life. Uh, discuss the role of selling in the economy, right? It's a, it's a big thing. How, how, are, or how are goods and services supposed to get somewhere if, if, if it's without selling? Uh, explain the role of selling in an organization and understand the role of selling uh, in getting the job that you want. A lot of great uh, videos and articles out there about negotiating, getting the job that you want, uh, and, and the things that you basically have to do to sell yourself to that hiring manager in order to, in order to be hired. Uh, common traits in successful people, and I know you're all successful, I know you all have these traits, uh, willingness to work hard, passion for the job, and engaging in personal selling. Uh, you know, especially is the further you move up the ranks in, uh, in, in positions, uh, the more that personal selling is going to be involved and the more important it's going to be. Uh, so we'll get, get what you want every day. Uh, the video Sales Motivation features Grant Cardin. Uh, he explains how salespeople are the lifeblood of the entire economy, right? They get things moving. Um, all budgets start with sales, right? Uh, so you can't have a budget for a company until you budget how much we're going to sell. Then we determine how much we're going to produce, and then we determine all the ancillary uh, you know, departments and how much we can pay them. But all that money comes from the sales department. Now, he discusses how your entire life depends on selling and how no dream can become a reality without selling. And uh, watch the video, it's great, uh, you know, very inspiring, uh, especially if you're actually already in the sales field. Uh, power player lessons and selling from successful people. Uh, video builder of sales champion features Tom Hopkins, so he has his own university. Uh, he's an author, speaker, columnist, and uh, sales coach at Tom Hopkins International. Uh, the video demonstrates how selling yourself is a crucial part of any selling process because nobody's going to buy anything from you unless they like you. Uh, unless you have just this product that nobody else has, right? If I have, the, you know, some magic uh, a crystal ball and nobody likes me, yeah, maybe they will buy it from me. But if everybody's selling the crystal ball and, you know, I'm not that great of a person, you're not going to buy it from me. A video showcases uh, Tom Hopkins' skills as a sales trainer and how he's built himself into a brand. Uh, another le uh, video, a uh, power player, lessons in selling from successful people. Uh, the video, sell with, not to. So it's about consultative selling these days. Uh, features Dr. Michael Solomon, professor of marketing, St. Joseph University. Uh, and, and it's interesting, I had a position, I won't name the company, where we did consultative selling. We weren't called sales reps, we were called uh, business solutions consultants. So what we did is we went in and we checked out 
uh, you know, how much they were, uh, the companies were printing from, uh, from laser printers. And then we said, we'll come back in a month and we'll tell you how much you can actually save because we're going to look at the back of the printers and we're going to say, okay, this is how many print jobs you're, you're using and or completing. And this is how many, um, uh, how many to uh, toner cartridges you're purchasing. And if you just take that money and give it to me for this very expensive copier, uh, it will do everything, including scan, email, print, fax, and all that good stuff. So we were consultative, uh, uh, you know, selling. You know, we were business solution consultants. We weren't sales reps. Uh, so that's about, you know, selling with. So I want to work with you to get a solution, not sell to. I don't want to come in and just, like, kind of jam it down your throat. Uh, he talks about the change selling and selling process has undergone. Uh, today, things are not sold to people. Things are sold with people, just as I mentioned. Discussion questions, those are always great. Uh, you, know, I, you know, with your classmates, you can ask the discussion questions to each other, get some feedback, or even if somebody who's not in the class just asks a question, or, you know, worst case scenario, uh, look in the mirror, ask them to yourself, or, you know, ask your pet. Uh, they won't respond, or, or hopefully don't respond, but, uh, you know, just kind of kind of think these discussion questions through. As a customer, recall a situation where you were sold to and a situation where you were sold with. Analyze the situation in terms of the selling approach taken by the salesperson in both uh, situations, right? So uh, think about it. you were sold to, that's probably a door-to-door -door salesperson. Uh, if you were sold with, that's probably somebody who wants to sit down and get a customized solution for you. Uh, explain with two examples uh, if the new selling mantra, selling with uh, customers and not to, is applicable to all products and service categories. And it's quite possible that it's not. Uh, you know, because I'm sure I can think of a few areas in terms of uh, in terms of uh, products and services in which it's not. Uh, so, what makes a great brand? And they have some examples of great brands here. Uh, you have IKEA, you have iPod, you have Red Bull, uh, you have Mini Cooper, right? When you see, when you see those uh, those four things, you, they're unique and you know exactly who they are. If you see at the IKEA sign, uh, even if from afar and you can't see the the letters I K E A, you still know that that's IKEA. Uh, Apple, you know, you see, you see the Apple, you understand. The Red Bull, you see the Bulls. I mean, it's very uh, the top one, unique, right? So that's a, the first one. Emotional connection. What type of re emotional connection do you have with Red Bull? You know, they have the great, you know, hip music in, and they have action sports. Uh, you know, so it, it, it's about uh, you know high energy. Uh, if it's relevant, right? All these things are definitely relevant. You need furniture. You need energy. Uh, you need uh, devices. Uh, you need to get around from point A to point B. It has to be consistent, right? You can't just shift in the middle and go all of a sudden to something, you know, totally, totally different. Uh, you want to stick with uh, what's consistent. Uh, so what makes a great brand? So if it's unique, brand option or offering not available from any other competitor, consistent, reliable, the same every time, uh, relevant, pertinent, and important to specific customers, right? If it's not important, then why are you selling it to me? Or why are you attempting to sell it to me? Because if it's not important to me, I'm not going to buy it from you. Uh, emotional connection, a bond, a relationship with a brand. Power selling is a lesson in selling from successful brands. In the video, Starbucks baristas uh, tell our story. Starbucks baristas talk about their emotional connection to the brand. And you see people there usually high energy in Starbucks and how emotionally connected they are to the actual company and what they sell and what they do. Uh, the baristas talk about uh, the new ad campaign that describes who baristas really are, why they are at Starbucks, and gives an overall picture uh, that they are there for the customer. Right. So that, that would make me feel good if I'm going to Starbucks and you're saying that you're there for me. Uh, more discussion questions. Uh, evaluate the importance of emotional connection to the brand in the selling process. Uh, explain the difference in the selling approach taken by an informed salesperson and a passionate salesperson. So you may be informed, be a consultant, you may be a passionate salesperson and not be as informed as a consultant, uh, but you may just have the gift of gab and be great at sales. <clears throat> internet, uh, power to the people. Obviously, the internet has changed how things are sold, whether it be products or services, uh, or products and services combined and bundled. Sales 2.0 is a term used to describe the role of the next generation of the internet in the selling process, including social networking, uh, mashups, communities, and collaboration. The video uh, that's also in the module. Uh, sales 2.0 features David Thompson, uh, CEO of Genius.com, at the whiteboard session. He discusses the benefits of combining Web 2.0 technologies with new selling techniques. Additional discussion questions. Evaluate the effectiveness of using Sales 2.0 in a selling process of customer relationship management software. And you always hear that, uh, you know, if you work for, uh, you know, a lot of companies, you have already heard customer relationship management software or CRM. You know, let's put it into our CRM or our, our system of record. 
Uh, you want to distinguish uh, between sales 1.0 and 2.0 and analyze the impact of uh, internet on selling uh, with an example, right? So always the discussion questions, like I said, whether or not I have an assignment out there on it, uh, I want you to uh, to go ahead and, and look at those discussion questions and, and, and know the answers because that will help you in your quizzes and your tests and just help your general knowledge. So the sales department, as they, they indicated earlier, is the heartbeat of every company. The level of sales that is generated by each salesperson pays for the roles in human resources, marketing, operations, and other departments, right? So if you work in a department that's not sales, right, you're not bringing in revenue. Uh, you know, you're just trying to probably just keep keep the people there or keep the people in, within a company uh, that are there that keep the clients there. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're a revenue or gener revenue generating a department like sales, uh, that that's why they say that the heart be the backbone of the company. And the sales department is responsible and accountable to deliver sales to generate revenue and profit, uh, which are required to operate uh, and to invest in the company, right? Got to get the cash flow, have to have the revenue coming in in order to do anything. Uh, is it sales or is it marketing, right? They say, oh, well, they're kind of interchangeable, but no, they're, they're different things. Uh, you know, you have to know how they are aligned. Uh, the video aligning sales with marketing features uh, Chip Terry, uh, VP and General Manager of Sales Intelligence at Zoom Info. Uh, he explains that by identifying your customer segment, uh, marketing and sales can focus their efforts to be more useful to each other. So if I identify, okay, only the people in North Dakota are the people who are going to buy this product, now marketing needs to get out there and basically pepper uh, all of North Dakota with our with our marketing materials so that sales can come in after and uh, you know and finish the job. Uh, more discussion questions, distinguish between marketing and sales. As you go through your text and do your reading, you should see the differences. Also, a couple slides in here shows how they work with uh, each other and uh, and also separate. Uh, mention the discipline uh, that uh, you think is vital uh, for generating maximum uh, leads, uh, marketing or sales. So, so like marketing, a lot of times they'll generate leads. And sales will generate leads as well because you have uh, other departments within your company. Uh, I have a lead on, on this guy. I sold him a treadmill, but he wants some weight, so I'm going to pass it over to the weights department. And uh, they'll, they'll make a sell as well. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, increase this real quick so you can kind of see. Slide it over. All right. Coming up far enough. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is slide our screen over a little bit. So I want you to be able to uh, see the difference between marketing and sales. Now, I'll, I'll have the uh, PowerPoint load-in resources, so that's not the only way that you'll be able to see it, but just for the video's sake, I want you to be able to uh, go ahead and see that. Right. Uh, so the difference between marketing and sales. So marketing uses the four Ps, product, place, promotion, and price, to determine the brand message. Uh, use the promotional mix, advertising, sales, promotion, public relations, direct marketing, interactive marketing, and personal selling to communicate the brand message to customers. Um, motivates customers to take an action such as going to the store or website or calling the phone number and then obviously sales takes it from there. Uh, builds ongoing relationships between the brand and the customer, interacts with and gets feedback from sales and uh, focuses on uh, uh, customer needs. Uh, sales, they identify which customers engage, uh, interacts one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, customers to identify needs and present solutions to, or opportunities. Converts interested customers into purchases, right? So they become interested on the marketing side. They become purchasers on the sales side. Builds an ongoing personal relationship between the brand and the customers also. Uh, is, a brand, uh, I, is a brand in the eyes of the customer, right? So in the eyes of the customer, the salesperson is the brand. Even though there's so many other things that go in before sales, in the eyes, that's, that's just what they see. Uh, <clears throat> interacts with and gives feedback to marketing uh, because if you get feedback to marketing from sales then they can do their job better and they can help you do your job better in the sales department and focuses on customer needs right so uh, obviously some of those things are very very similar uh, but some are also uh, very different uh, because uh, we want to uh, we want to interact uh, most appropriately uh, with our, our sales and marketing department so let me extend this out for you a little bit more Go ahead and back and fix that. And go back to regular, and there we are. Uh, so we, so we definitely want to make sure that we, uh, you know, that they, that they work together, work in tandem to do uh, what's best for the company. Selling you the power of your personal brand. 
And so, uh, you know, I've heard people ask a lot of times, and some people, they'll always ask this question, what's your brand? And uh, uh, maybe we'll do an, uh, one of our extra credit assignments, because I've done it before in other classes, for, for students to come up with, with a brand. I share my brand, and then they come up with uh, what their brand is. And it's quite an uh, interesting assignment. Uh, uh, before the question was posed to me or asked, actually it wasn't posed to me, it was posed to someone else. They told me about it, and I said, oh, you know what, I should come up with uh, and figure out what my brand is. Now, I'll be honest, I don't have my brand memorized, uh, but I did write it out, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, so maybe that, that'll be one of our extra credit assignments where I say, hey, here's my brand. Uh, you know, give, give me your brand. It needs to be this length. And uh, it, it'll also help you. And so when somebody has a conversation that, you know, asks you a question, and you give them your brand, they say, hey, you know, I suppress that guy seems to, you know, uh, have, have thought about his future. <clears throat> So steps which help uh, you begin your career. Uh, third, so explore possibilities, create your personal mission statement. Uh, so mission statement as well as a brand uh, is important, and define your personal brand. If you have both, uh, you're, you're well ahead of the game. Uh, so personal mission statement uh, is a brief but broad statement of who you are and what you want to accomplish. It should be easy to recall. Uh, it is important because it provides you with a concrete sense of direction and purpose. Uh, summarize in relatable words, right? Not the words, not so big that, that I have to go pick up a dictionary to understand exactly what you were trying to say about yourself. Uh, so learn to write your personal mission statement. So uh, these are links here, and, <clears throat> and you'll see them um, housed in, in, the, the, in the resources as well with these, uh, uh, with these uh, PowerPoints. So quintessential careers, two links there. Uh, Nightgale uh, Conant, uh, that's a different site, and then Time Thoughts, right? So those all help you write your personal mission statement. <clears throat> so here's an example of a personal mission statement. Uh, so with a personal mission statement, it's easier to get uh, an enjoyable job. Uh, an example of a good personal mission statement is uh, to be healthy, fit, and energetic so that I can enjoy life to the fullest and have the energy to pursue all my goals. I will do this by exercising regularly, uh, following a nutritious diet, and eliminating negative uh, habits that are impacting my health. Now, Here's my opinion on this. Uh, I'm not so big on the personal uh, mission statements. Uh, personal mission statement is more for yourself. I'm not so big on communicating that in a job interview or speaking with uh, someone who might you know, dictate your career. I say the brand statement is what you want to you come in with in terms of that. So uh, so like I said, uh, I'll, I'll post mine, and then uh, you guys will post yours if you want to uh, for extra credit at some point uh, throughout the course. might be for Chapter 1, might be for Chapter 2. Uh, but but we'll definitely uh, do that. <clears throat> so personal mission statement given the below uh, four are four personal mission statement templates. Students can create four different personal mission statements by using these templates and uh, give class presentation discussing the most effective statement. Right. So uh, you guys can can review those. Uh, like I said, the personal mission statement that's that's good. Not going to give me credit, extra credit for that one. Uh, what I, I'm more uh, interested in is is what type of uh, brand statement you can create. Brand points. So think about these before you work on a, a brand statement. If that's something that you choose to do, uh, you have leadership skills, uh, you have work experience, and you have academic achievement. Right. So it should fall into one of those bu buckets. Right. Your work experience. Say that you work on academic achievement. You obviously have some academic achievement because you're in this class. Uh, and then your leadership skills, uh, which would come from work experience and possibly also academic achievement as well. Uh, so specific characteristics that define your personal brand. Your uh, brand, not someone else's brand. So brand points, there are specific characteristics which define your personal brand. They're like platforms uh, used to demonstrate your skills and experience, just like a politician. And then by identifying your brand points, you can tell a powerful brand story. And I feel that uh, my brand statement is pretty good. And when I say it, it, it the light bulbs start popping off and, and I say, okay, these are the different directions I can go to kind of explain where my career has been and where I believe it will go. Examples of brand points. Uh, leadership skills, describing your roles in leadership positions, academic achievement, highlighting your scholarship awards and honors, work experience, emphasizing your contribution and accomplishments in, our, uh, in your current and past positions. Right? So these are different examples of, of, of different brand points that you can add. Uh, discussion question, evaluate the role of brand points in communicating your brand story to your prospective employers. Right? So think about it, it's more likely it's either you're going into a company and you're, you're trying to get hired. <clears throat> for a position or you're at a company and you're trying to get hired to or promoted to a different position, which would be great. Right? Uh, so summary, this is slide 30 of 30. That's it for chapter one. 
uh, very, very, uh, you know, nice and smooth. Uh, some of them, you know, sometimes in some of the things, it's like 50 slides long. This was only 30. Uh, don't think it was that terrible uh, to listen to for, for about 20 minutes. Uh, so summary, selling takes place in every area of life. Uh, you have to remember that. Uh, brands and selling, uh, customer trust brands. Uh, sales and marketing are distinct uh, but closely related functions. Uh, so they're, they're, they're two separate things, but they have closely related functions and they work in tandem. Uh, you can get the job by uh, you want by exploring the possibilities, uh, writing a personal mission statement, and what I say is most important, defining your personal brand and being able to communicate that. So that's it for chapter one. Uh, you know, uh, you should have already uh, seen an email from me that kind of guides you through uh, the process of this course. But if you don't know, uh, chapter one, you read uh, from the electronic book that I sent you. You watch all the videos. Uh, you post a comment on uh, one of the videos that you uh, like the most or that has the most to do with uh, what you would think it to be uh, successful in sales. Uh, then you do um, your quiz because you'll have a quiz for every chapter. There are 15 chapters throughout the course. And uh, typically it'll be uh, four tests. And then any other, uh, you know, supplemental assignments that, that I post that have to do with the, the lecture uh, such or extra credit uh, such as the, the brand statement uh, one as well. So. Uh, so that's it. Uh, hopefully you guys, uh, you know, were able to get through that and, and read the chapter. Uh, this is a very, very interesting course. Uh, I think you guys will like it. Um, you know, as, as I read through the book myself and went through all the PowerPoints and everything, uh, I, I, I definitely did like this course uh, more and more. Uh, and, it, and I like, I think I like it a lot just because it applies to the real world, real, real world and everything is very direct and, and specific towards uh, things that you can you can implement in the workplace, uh, in your life, and in your, in your scholastic, uh, you know, achievement as well. So that's it. Uh, everybody, uh, be sure to uh, get all your assignments done and have a good day and a great week.